Welcome to day 1561 of What Chapter To Now. Sharon Horn Awesome here documenting the business journey primarily uh, as I go from the brick and mortar corporate world of business to the online world of business and 2020 with the pandemic and everything, a little bit of back and forth. I decided I didn't want to just stay in the online world. Uh, there's a whole lot of physical stuff that needs to be created in the world. <clears throat> and I want to be a part of that. Manufacturing has always been a love of mine. And so I decided I would do offline things as well. So, <clears throat> excuse my throat. Grease someone's palm. This is hand sanitizer, but greasing someone's palm was our idiom for supersize your business today, our financial related idiom. And of course, it's one that's been around in English since the 1500s, as well as it's Roman in origin when Pliny the Younger used it and he called it ointment uh, with respect to getting what you want. It comes from the practice of uh, applying grease to a machine or to a wheel to make it operate more smoothly, just like we might give someone money in exchange for a favor or a bribe or to bribe someone is what it really means. So uh, some of the examples would be, you know, paying to get access to somebody or something, paying to get permits, paying to get a uh, favorable review of your contracts or things. Uh, what are, I can't, I'm, I watch too many movies, so it's hard to think. There's lots of examples. Paying for protection, paying for police protection, paying for mob protection would be examples of greasing someone's palm. But <clears throat> greasing someone's palm, just like everything else in business, it's an exchange of value, right? So you have to decide morally, ethically, legally, is it something that you need to do to supersize and grow your business? Or is it something that you choose to do because you want to shortcut the process and get what you want to get done faster, easy, more efficiently, or more effectively. Sometimes, <clears throat> and this is a tough one for me to talk about, and I hope I don't come off as judgy and pompous, but I drew that line in the sand a long time ago. And if the core values and the beliefs of an organization didn't match mine, because I learned early on in my corporate career, sometimes upper management would ask us lower and middle managers to implement decisions and things they'd made that didn't make any sense for the people that would have to implement those decisions and and those actions, right? They would have to actually do the things that management wanted them to do. Yet, it was our responsibility, if we wanted to keep our job, to make those changes happen in the lower ranks of the organization. <clears throat> so I learned early on that that didn't really feel right to me. If you can't explain what's in it for the people that are expected to make the change and do the activity, what's in it for them to actually do that and tie that to a real reason that makes logical sense to them, then you shouldn't be asking them to do it. If you wouldn't do it yourself, you shouldn't be asking them to do that. And I guess that's where I drew the line in the sand is if I wouldn't do it, if I'm not willing to do it, I'm not going to ask anyone else to do that. And that's my belief. It, I'm not expecting anyone else to have that belief, but that is my personal core value and belief. I won't ask you to do it if I wouldn't do it myself. If I wouldn't do it myself, then I shouldn't be asking anyone else to do it. And so Greasing someone's palm kind of falls in that same category for me. If I have to cross my moral and value line to make something happen, I don't care if it's going to happen faster. I'm going to say no to that because it doesn't feel right to me. But you have to decide. Each and every one of us as human beings has to decide what is a yes and a no for us. And I personally go based on how does it make me feel. If it makes me feel okay, good, happy, positive emotions, I say yes. If it makes me feel bad, negative, icky, slimy, unethical, immoral, or icky. I think I said icky. I'm not going to do it. I don't choose to feel bad, negative in any way. If I ever have to choose between doing something that I'm going to have to worry about getting caught at, I'm never going to do it. Now, that doesn't mean childish things growing up. Did I drink when I was younger? Yes. Did I do things that I probably regret? Yes. But thankfully, there weren't cell phones back then for everybody to to film every second of your life or twist and turn and, and change things up and make them look like they were something different than they are. Uh, that's called manipulation. Again, lying, cheating, bribery, manipulation, all of that is on the wrong side of the line for me, right? It's on the, it's on the bad side of the line and I'm just gonna say no to it. So I think it's a great idiom. I think it's a great way to think about what do we really stand for and are we willing to find different solutions to problems find different ways of doing things in order to match our goals and values? Or are we willing to compromise on what we know is right or wrong, good or bad, uh, good or evil, I like to say, and are we going to do that to get what we want faster? Because that tells us a lot about ourselves. It doesn't mean we won't ever have done that, but it means that 
it's it's something we might want to reflect on. So I, I just shared as part of that, how do you get people to help you in ways that aren't having to grease someone's palm? Now, greasing somebody's palm is, it's an exchange of value, but it's also different than hiring someone to help you with something. Like if you're hiring a coach or if you're part of a mastermind and you pay to be part of that, that's not greasing someone's palm. That's paying for a shorter way of learning something. Uh, I think a lot of online gurus and marketing experts uh, actually, I don't know if they cross that line between uh, paying for access and paying to grease someone's palm. I guess the busier you get, the busier you get, the less time you have, the more people demanding your time, the less time you have. So it's it's worth more dollars. And so is that greasing someone's palm or is that paying for the access that you need in order to get what you want? And some people will pay for it. Some people won't, right? All right, enough on that. So our topic for the annual challenge today, BU 365 Day Challenge, to do one thing every day that improves us, we're working and focusing on financial well-being, financial health the month of May. Money May May is, is the financial area and aspect of our life. So we're starting the soap framework tomorrow, my favorite, the soap framework, relax soap, and the soap framework. So today we have to decide what area of our finances do we want to change what is challenging us what do we want to change and we're going to over the next four days apply the soap framework consciously one day at a time the s the o the a the p so that we can practice it we're going to practice it a lot this year so that we install it in our subconscious so whenever we're faced with a change or a challenge and i don't know about you but pretty much every day some area or aspect of my life there's a change a challenge something that comes up that i have to make a decision or a choice about for me so i want to have it be automatic for the day-to-day -day, everyday things but I also want a framework so that when I have to consciously make a choice or a decision about something I can use that same framework on a conscious level to make sure I'm making the best choice and that's the best decision following the best process for me so that I always am moving in the direction I want to go right so that's why I love the soap framework so we're going to hop into the S tomorrow but today before we can do that you have to pick out what area you want to work on so it might be income it might be job related it might be uh anything related to money it might be reducing expenses coming up with another stream of income it might be raising money for a project i've done uh where i wanted to make x thousands of dollars to hire an assistant i'm and i did it once when i wanted to uh participate in a coaching program that was 20k and i'm like all right i'm not going to take any money out of my existing resources how am i going to raise 20k to do this coaching program Things like that. So you have to pick one thing, one specific thing that we can apply the SOAP framework to. Why? Because if you can apply it to one thing, you can apply it to anything. Once we learn the process and understand how simple the process is, we can make it automatic. And guess what? Automatic things help us automatically get what we want. So that's what I'm working on today. Uh, actually, the pieces of content. Oh, banging magnifying glasses around because some of us always have dueling magnifying glasses. I think I have about eight magnifying glasses sitting around me at any given time. So if I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I'll be with you tomorrow. I've got a couple trainings, a couple challenges, and a couple other uh, uh, consulting commitments this week. So it's going to be a busy week, but it's always an exciting, fun week when I get to work with new people. So have an awesome day, and I will be with you tomorrow.